Printing stuff on my 3D printers, that's a lot of fun. But did you know there's other ways we can have fun with a 3D printer? So forget about all those toys that you print out that make kids happy. Stop making all those functional prints to make your house and your car look better. And do you really need to try and sell another articulated dragon or snake on Etsy? I mean, do you? Why do all of that? When you can show some love for your 3D printer for all that hard work. Show your 3D printer that you appreciate them. And how, you ask, can I do that? Well, I'll tell you this. It's not with another fancy filament that's just going to clog the poop chute. Nope. It's time for upgrades. A while back, Big Tree Tech asked me to review their Panda Touch control pad for my Bamboo P1S. And I admit, I really do like it a lot, but it would come in even more handy if I had a few more P1S's or P1P's or X1's. Sounds like a built-in excuse for more printers, right? Uh, that's good. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Well, around the time I got the Panda Touch, Big Tree Tech came out with their whole Panda upgrade kit. And that includes the control pad and a whole lot more. Well, I was curious about what else they could upgrade. And, well, they were curious about what I would think about the upgrade. So they sent it over and... I'm gonna see what happens. Opening up all the different packages I got from Big Tree Tech, there were a few things I was really excited about. A few I thought were probably gonna be pretty cool. One item though I was extremely nervous about. Something else that made me a little nervous was the notable lack of instructions with everything. Each item, though, does come with a QR code for online instructions. A lot of the instructions online are in Chinese. You can use the translate in your web browser for that, like I did. But there's also some videos to show you what to do. I'll have links to all of this in the description. All right, so just to get the one I'm a little nervous about out of the way right up front, let's dig into this big round container here. And right there on the side, that's the main cause of my anxiety. Panda fur. I mean, fur? On my bamboo? Yeah, oh. man. Nerves and fur. Well, not exactly. Seems that's just an unfortunate naming convention based on the whole thing being panda. It's actually faux leather, and it's a wrap for your printer. So, let's see what we got. Now, a couple of things that we're told in the write-up is this fur is supposed to be scratch-resistant and insulating. Also, they claim it's going to help reduce some noise from your printer, and I guess adding anything to the outside could help with that, maybe a little. Now, I don't really have a way to test the heat retention or sound dampening, but it does make some sense that those things would be possible. And right now, you can get these furs in bright pink, brown, or orange like the one that I got. I think I would have liked to have a black or white version, maybe some primary colors, but if you're looking to spruce up your P1S or X1C, the look of it, this panda fur could really make a difference. Well, now we're going to go from the outside to the inside, and we're going to shed a little light on everything inside uh, before we get to some of those bigger upgrades. And we can do that by installing the inside lighting using the Panda Lux LED kit. Well, the write-up on this says that it's plug-and-play, and it uses the factory controllers, and that's awesome. And that means it's supposed to just click right in and work like the light bar that comes already pre-installed. I do love the sleek design of this light bar. It's pretty cool, and then you see how it just fits right in there and makes even more sense and basically just disappears. A big part of this is so that the LiDAR on an X1C won't have any issues. The magnets, though, seem to be just okay. Hopefully they're not going to come loose during calibration tests or even vigorous printing, but a small piece of double-sided tape here and there could be an easy fix. I have a number of time lapses that just didn't turn out great because of that side light. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this changes things. Well, now that we've installed our light and we can see really, really well inside, the next thing we need to do is install the Panda Hub. Now, I had already installed the Panda Touch in that previous video, and that used my only USB connector. Well, if I ever want to do any more upgrades down the road that might use that USB, I'll have to make a choice on which one to use. But not now. 
This Panda hub works just like any other USB hub, but this one's specifically made for your Bamboo P1 series machines. Installing the hub's easy and simple. And now, well, I have an extra USB port in there for another upgrade down the road. Well, we can see better inside. We have an extra USB port. The next two upgrades can pretty much go on at the same time. And these two upgrades are something like out of a Fast and Furious movie if it was about 3D printers and not cool looking cars. Make sure they're fast. The Panda Revo High Flow Hot End comes with a 0.4 millimeter Revo High Flow nozzle, and those have some pretty impressive specs. According to Big Tree Tech, the Revo Hot End has a flow rate of 40 millimeters cube. From what I've seen, that's nearly double what Bamboo has in its default settings for a standard PLA filament, but they do say you'll get a speed increase of about 37.5%. And in case you don't know, that flow rate, that's how fast your hot end and the nozzle can push filament out. So a faster flow rate, that equals faster print speeds. The Revo and standard bamboo hot ends can both get up to about 300 degrees Celsius, but the Revo has a 60 watt heater core built in that should allow it to heat up way quicker than others, and they claim it's even safer. And just so you know, I couldn't find the wattage of the bamboo hot end, so I don't know if that's just hype or if it means anything, but Hey, if it heats up quicker, I'll take it. Well, the Revo also has a quick change system that should allow a 30 second nozzle swap. Since I haven't used these types of hot ends before, I was a little worried that those nozzles might not be able to find any of those in the future. Well, they do have to be high flow nozzles, but I did find different brands online, including ones from E3D, and they're the ones that actually helped Big Tree Tech develop this hot end. And yes, they're a bit pricier than standard nozzles, but they should also last longer too. I'll put up an Amazon affiliate link in the description for a few of them that I found online. All right, so after the hot end upgrade is complete, but before putting everything else back into place, the next thing to do is upgrade the cooling system. The Panda Jet cooling fan duct is a really simple upgrade. I've printed and added similar fan ducts to some of my older printers, and this one is also 3D printed. Now, I don't know what you have at home, but I don't have the ability to print high quality multi-jet fusion nylon like this duct is made out of. Not that I wouldn't want a machine that could do that, right? And a shed to go with it. Well, you know, that's a lot to ask. That but the fan duct works with all the standard hot ends as well as this new Revo. Its intention is to redirect the airflow to give you better cooling. And better cooling means your prints have a much better chance at perfectly printed bridges and overhangs. Well, now that the hard parts are done, it's time to get to some more cosmetic upgrades, at least for our prints. But these two upgrades are also extremely functional. These new Panda build plates, they're double-sided, and on the main side, it's exactly the same as you'd expect. It's spring-stilled, textured PEI sheet, and it has a really nice grid imprint. On the other side, though, is the real story. I got a smooth PEO sheet that has this diamond pattern on it, and I know we've all seen these over the last year or so, but I've really wanted to test these out, and they have other plates to choose from with one that's just plain smooth and one that leaves a carbon fiber impression on your print. So what's the point of all these pattern sheets? Well, obviously, they look cool. <laughs> Whatever prints on the plate picks up the design and that pattern and just makes it look awesome. And it's kind of nice to have a very flat, smooth print as well. Now, I don't want to forget to mention to you that these PEO sheets are pretty different from your originals, so you'll definitely want to run a calibration before you do these prints, and you may need to turn off build plate detection on your 3D printer. By the way, PEI stands for the material polyethylamide, and PEO is for polyether olefin. So now you know, and I know, but do we really know? Wait, what? Anyway, Big Tree Tech also included another build plate for me to try out, and I may be even more curious about this one. Doesn't have a cool name, they just call it the Panda Build Plate Double Cryo Grip Textured Coating Steel Sheet Durable and Heat Resistant Build Plate. And yes, they said build plate twice in that name, and I presume it's because it's double sided. 
Now for me, adding Cryo to the name really opens up a lot of possibilities. But it's just another naming thing, since what this build plate really does is allow you to print PLA at ambient air temps. So no build plate heating, just whatever normal regular temps you have in your room. Now they do say that's between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius for PLA, 50 to 70 degrees for PETG, and 80 to 100 degrees Celsius for ABS. Well, since our hot end gets way past those temps and the door is probably closed, the air inside your case should probably reach those temps with no problem if you're using one with a case. The texture on the plate is similar to normal PEI sheets, but it feels a lot cleaner and maybe a little rubbery. I don't know, but it's pretty neat and it works great. Well, I admit, that was a lot of upgrades at one time. You'll probably just want to stick to one or two at a time. I'll admit, this was a little overwhelming doing all of it at once. And my final thoughts on all of these upgrades, well, I think they all serve their own purpose in each category they're in, and for that part, they do a great job. Upgrading your 3D printer may not be as satisfying as making that big print and hearing everybody ooh and ah over it, but imagine getting that print 10 or 20% faster with less problems and a really cool imprint on it. Wouldn't that be worth it? You had me at hello, tear. Nothing? Yeah. yeah, I admit it. I'm a tinkerer, but I think most of us in 3D printing, we probably fall into that category, even if it's not tinkering on the printer, but the prints themselves. Please hit like and subscribe to support the channel, and let me know if you have any other ideas for upgrading. It doesn't matter what printer you have. Let's help each other out as we learn, upgrade, create, and amaze.